chirality is an interesting phenomenon that occurs whenever you have the possibility of what is called handedness. Now, you can describe your hand as having a thumb and four fingers, but there is a difference between your left hand and your right hand. Yes, they both have a thumb and four fingers, but there is no way that you can superimpose these on each other except mirror images. If you put your left hand up in the mirror, it would look like the right hand of somebody who was inside the mirror. It has consequences too. You might not think, well, what difference would it make? But it turns out here's a pair that are the same in so many respects, except at this carbon, this hydrogen is sticking out towards you and this hydrogen is sticking away from you. Other than that, these are the same molecule. It turns out that if you have these molecules and you smell them, one of them smells like caraway seeds and the other one smells like spearmint. So these differences do have an effect. They are examples of isomers. It's any compound that has the same chemical formula, but it's put together differently. This is a very subtle distinction. So it has its own name of this chirality. And isomers, there's different types of isomers. A stereoisomer, that's differences in orientation of the bonds between atoms in the molecule. Okay, so that's about what direction they're going, all right? And specifically, an enantiomer is optical isomers. Whenever you have this plus and minus that they put here, they are going to tell you about how it reacts with light. And light can be polarized. And when it is, if you put it through a solution that contains a pure batch of the negative carbone, it will rotate to the left with the light's polarization. And the positive carbon will rotate the polarization to the right, which is very interesting. The point, though, is you are going to have to be able to tell one from another. These are mirror images. They can't be superimposed on one another, and they will rotate the light. So here I have a pair of isomers. They are the same because there's carbon in the middle. I got a green, an orange, a silver, and a white attached to each of them. They're both like that. Now, what you will note about them is I have put it on the paper so that the white and the silver are in exactly the same orientation. And that includes, you know, if you made a plane up through the carbon, it would be the same. But look. One of them, it's green and orange, and the other one, it's orange and green. And no matter how you try to twist this, you are not going to be able to superimpose these on each other. The thing you can do is to twist it around so that you can make it into the mirror. Because you see, if you put a mirror here, they match. But they don't match when you try to superimpose them. Nope, that does not work. We have defined a chiral compound as being a pair of molecules that are not superimposable because they're mere images. Why does that happen? It's because they have stereo centers. When does that happen? Well, it's so often it's in an organic, so we talk about it being a stereo center being a carbon atom because the carbons like to form four bonds, right? And the four bonds, as we saw with this little guy, are going to four different things. That would make this a stereo center because it's going to four different atoms here. Now it can be four different atoms or it can be four different groups. So this particular one in this picture is bonded to four different things. The first one is this hydrogen. Boom, just a hydrogen. The second one is this methyl group. The third one is this ethyl group, and then it goes out to this propyl group. You're not responsible for knowing the names of those groups, okay? But you can see that the four are different, and that means that we could have this hydrogen either coming up towards us, or it could be going back into the screen.
Now, if we look at this guy down here, we can see this carbon is not going to be a stereocenter because it's bonded to two H's. The H's are equivalent. So as soon as you see something like that, you're like, oh, nope, that's equivalent. This one, oh, nope, two H's. I can deal with that. This guy, one H, but if I look to this side, it's bonded to a carbon, and to this side, well, that's a double bond. So that's not four different things. Okay, you don't have to worry about that one. And this one, again, there's a double bond. No, don't have to worry about it. But this guy is bonded to this, well, let's start with the simplest. It's bonded to a hydrogen, then it's bonded to a methyl group, and then going this way looks different than going that way because going this way, the carbon has only one hydrogen on it, while going this direction, the carbon has two hydrogens on it. So that is a chiral center, also called a stereocenter. That's what you need to know you might have to identify which one of these is a chiral center. Now, here is another one that is bonded to four different groups of atoms. And you can see they've called them out right here in the listing. So you have the hydrogen, the amine group, the carboxyl group here, and this ethyl group. So since there are four different ones, it's going to be a chiral compound. And it's also an amino acid because of the fact that we've added this nitrogen into the mix. So when we look, we're going to look for sp3 hybridized carbon atoms because those are going to be the ones that are attached to four different things, making four different sigma bonds. So we have to look sometimes past the ones that are right next to it because if I just looked at this, the first thing I encounter is just the carbon. If I look this way, it's just the carbon, but the whole group is different from the whole group here. So that's how we're going to identify the sort of asymmetry that will let us identify stereocenters.